Hey, Eric. Uh, welcome to Kansas State. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I've read a little bit of your backstory, but uh, can you tell me in your own words just what was your journey like going from, you know, kind of unheralded recruit to walk on to scholarship guy now all the way to Kansas State? Yeah, so uh, coming out of high school, um, I had an, a scholarship opportunity at Upper Iowa University, where I ended up going, um, Winona University, and then I had a preferred walk-on deal at Northern Illinois. Um, coming out of high school, you know, just following the money, trying to help my parents out financially, I just ended up going to Upper Iowa University. Um, it was about week seven, um, I was originally redshirting because at the time you couldn't, we didn't have the deal where you could play in four games and still keep your red shirt. So um, they, we had a couple guys go down, a couple guys get hurt. So I ended up having my red shirt pulled about week seven. Um, got in, had a couple starts, had a couple good games. Um, and then towards the end of the season, I decided that I kind of wanted, uh, I guess, a more competitive culture. Um, I guess a little more of a challenge and just kind of a better overall college experience. So talked to some people and just started reaching out to junior colleges across Southern California. So my buddies and just kind of research I've done, uh, kind of figured football over there was, would be a good spot for me. I ended up at uh, San Diego Mesa college. I played there for a year. Um, and then after leaving there, I ended up walking on at Utah state red shirted when I first got there, played these last two years and grad transfer. Now I'm here at Kansas state. Um, uh, there are a lot, I don't know how, if you're aware of this, but a lot of, former Kansas State players kind of have similar backstories to you. Do you think that your personality and your work ethic will will fit in really well here? Yeah, one thing I really liked about Kansas State um, was it seems like it's just a lot of hardworking guys that um, really just – they just work hard, you know, stick to the grind, blue-collar guys who, who work hard and want to win games, win championships. So I, I like that about Kansas State, you know, versus having a lot, I guess, big-time recruits who, I guess, kind of come in and – don't really like to stick to the grind. They like to run away from the weight room or, you know, our conditioning workouts and stuff like that. Okay. Is there anything specific about this defense that really appeals to you? Yeah. So uh, when I was at Utah state, we went from an odd front to the even front and then back to the odd front. Um, and then 2019, I liked playing in the even front, the true four down front. Um, so defense I'm familiar with, obviously it's a little bit different, especially terminology and whatnot. So, I'm excited. You know, got some big boys up front I get to play behind, so that'll be nice. All right. Hey, thanks, Eric, and I look forward to watching you play. Appreciate that. Thank you. Ryan Wallace. Hey, Eric, Ryan Wallace here. Uh, you know, I got a chance to talk to Coach Hill and Coach Ruiz, some of your former coaches this week, and both of them credited you as kind of being one of the most driven players they've ever been around. And I'm just curious, where does that that work ethic, that desire to be – great that inner confidence really stem from um I would say a lot of it just growing up when I was younger um I don't know started probably my first year of playing football uh my dad's probably one of the most competitive people you'll ever meet um beat me in everything growing up and I guess it started kind of with my dad and me wanting to beat him in a race you know beat him playing hoops or whatever it is we we're doing he kind of built that competitive nature into me um I just I hate losing I love winning, you know, whatever it is, whatever we got going on, I always want to be first. And I don't know, kind of stem from my dad, just the way he raised me growing up. Um, it's the fact that, you know, nothing's going to be given to you. You got to earn everything you get. So kind of starting there. And then I've, I guess I've just always felt like since I was a kid, I've been, you know, I've missed out on opportunities that I feel like I should have been a part of, or I guess just kind of underlooked across the board. So I always like to, you know, go to a new school, work hard and, prove that I deserve to be there and you know I'm a I'll be able to help the team out with whatever the goal is and, and winning a conference championship that season are you the type of person that has ever let doubt kind of creep into your mind I mean were there ever low moments where you thought maybe I made a mistake with this path going to this school or whatever or are you always just confident in your ability to succeed and, and make things work um overall for the most part I would say yeah I mean at the end of the day um, I try to keep my faith um, with God as high as possible, um, that at the end of the day, you know, I'm where I'm at for a reason. And, you know, there's a plan set in store for me. I just, I just got to find it. But, you know, I'll be the first one to say I've called Coach Hill. I've called Coach Reese. You know, I've talked to my parents a little bit, you know, former coaches, former friends. And you know, there, was a, there was a lot of times where, you know, I was like, what am I doing in San Diego? You know, paying for school, paying, you know, 
really a financial burden on my family. You know, maybe at a time when I wasn't getting many looks or um, I had a bad game. And it's just, you kind of ask yourself, you know, what are you doing out here? Why, you know, it's big investment. Um, you know, there's a lot to lose and really a lot to gain at the same time. And then it's a similar deal, you know, at Utah State. Um, I was excited, you know, to walk on and improve myself. But at the same time, you're looking at it like, you know, I gave up basically a full ride to Upper Iowa. Um, now, obviously, I had some smaller schools that uh, wanted to offer me scholarships. But, you know, it's like I could have had my school fully paid for. But, you know, here I am instead of walking on paying full tuition, you know, at Utah State. And sometimes it does get cloudy. You, you just question what you're doing or why you're doing it. And I guess it comes – you just got to get back to um, – you know, what my goals are and where I want to be when I'm done playing college ball. And at the end of the day, it's the hard work's going to get me there and it's gotten me to Kansas State. So I'm happy to be where I'm at, even though I've had kind of, kind of a rocky road and some road bumps. Appreciate the time, Eric. Best of luck to you. Thank you. John? Yeah, Eric, how did, how did K-State just get on your radar when you were uh, looking for a, a new destination? Um, so I'd kind of, when I entered the transfer portal, um, I reached out really to a lot of my junior college coaches um, who are different places in the country. You know, some of them are still in San Diego Mesa College. And I was just asking for some help, um, reaching out to as many schools as possible, getting my name, getting my film out there. Um, and I had a talk with uh, Coach Hill, Keegan Hill. Um, he was, you know, my coach and basically like a mentor, like a father figure for me um, coming out of high school. Uh, from my sophomore to my senior year and he had just reached out to uh, coach BA here um, sent him my film sent him my information um, got that over to the defensive staff and they they liked how I played um, coach Klanderman was the first one to give me a call and from there coach talked to coach standard and it just went well from there and I can imagine COVID probably played a factor into this like everything did this past year but just the only getting to play in a couple of games this past year, what was that like for you? And just take me through, you know, kind of what, what went on your last year at Utah State. Yeah, it was tough. Um, we missed, we really only missed one game because of COVID. And then we had, we missed the last, you know, as a team, as a program, we decided to opt out of that last game for, you know, different issues that were going on within our administration, which is a whole nother deal. But across the board, you know, we face the same challenges really that every pro every team in the country is facing Whether you had guys out for injuries, which normally happens COVID season or not. Um, you got guys out with COVID, you got close contact guys, got coaches in coaches out, um, same deal with COVID and contact tracing. So it was tough. Um, can't really make too many excuses though, because really we're fighting the same battle. Everybody was fighting, fighting that season. So. And for people who haven't seen you play just how, how would you describe your strengths as a linebacker and what kind of a player you are um I think the two two biggest things I do well is I think I um I think I have good lateral speed I think I get sideline to sideline well and I also think I come downhill aggressively so I would say those those are two things I do well appreciate it Eric thanks man thank you we'll go two more starting with Derek hey, Eric uh, what was the school search process like since you weren't able to make those visits uh, that you normally would as a transfer target or, or was Kansas State really the only school on your radar? Um, so initially, I mean, most of my recruiting was kind of stemming through Twitter and then kind of close contacts that my coaches had. So, you know, some of my coaches um, in the junior college realm had reached out to friends, um, other close coaches that coached with before through the phone, really phone calls, you know, Twitter DMs, Twitter follows and stuff like that. And then when I finally, you know, really started talking to Kansas State, it was over the phone. And then our, our I guess, biggest call was, you know, through Zoom. Every, everything's um, done through Zoom basically now if you want to try to get some face-to-face -face contact. So that's really all we used. And how would you describe your first days on campus and and just the, I guess, maybe the challenges of getting to know everyone because of, you know, the way the world's working right now and just maybe some guys you've really hit it off with so far. Yeah, it was good. I mean, the one thing was, um, I mean, getting here, I had to quarantine, obviously. So just ha hanging out by myself. Um, I'm living with uh, Boom um, right now. So, I mean, really, I was at, at the house basically a week by myself before he even had to get on campus. Um, newer guys, you know, we had orientation, all that stuff we got to do. 
but you know, yeah, it's tough. You don't really see all the guys. And I mean, still, we really don't have anything mandatory right now. Uh, we got a team meeting yesterday, but other than that, it's, you know, you don't really get the chance to see everybody. And then, I mean, you got a hoodie on and a mask. You can barely even tell who anybody is now. So it's, uh, it's been better. I got to work out, um, with, uh, with Deuce, with Daniel Green, the other linebacker today. So it was nice to interact with him, get to know him a little bit better. Um, talk to Cody Fletcher a little bit too. You know, Skyler reached out to me um, as soon as I committed, which was nice. And just just talking to guys here and there, uh, it's been good so far. Thank you. Last one here, Ryan Black. Hey, Eric, it's, uh, it's Ryan Black uh, with Manhattan Mercury. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Hey, doing pretty well. well and you actually um, kind of touched on it in a previous answer, and I'm just extremely curious about it because of what a situation it was. You brought up you got uh, you know there at Utah State, you guys not playing playing the last game uh, because you know the controversial comments that the school president made, and that you know you guys as a team unanimously voted not to play. What uh, what did you learn the most from that experience? Just not just only obviously as a football player, but just as a as a person and how you think kind of taking that kind of stand kind of will help you going forward in life? I think the coolest part about it um, was kind of how we all came together. You know, we had a lot of stuff going on at Utah State, especially, um, and I mean, across the country with racial inequality. Um, and I think the way our team to get, came together, black, white, Mexican, uh, we have a large Polynesian community in Utah and a part of our program. Um, whatever nationality, whatever race you were, I think everybody saw that things that were going on at Utah State weren't right. Um, it was stuff that we didn't stand for, stuff we didn't want to represent as a university. Um, I just thought it was really cool that, you know, you got a bunch of guys between the ages of, you know, 18 and 24 to come together to say, you know what, this isn't right. Um, using our platform as student athletes, you know, at the level we play football, it was, it was just really cool to, to come together and voice how we felt about the situation and how we can bring attention to issues like this that are going on every day. And then just as a follow up to that, um, did you already know that you guys had that kind of power as, as student athletes or did that really show you like, Hey guys, look what we're capable of when we can, when we band together like this. Yeah. When, uh, so Nick Henninger really, um, Nick Henniger and Justice Tay were kind of the two guys that that brought the idea up. And, you know, when they first brought it up, I was I was kind of surprised, you know, kind of a little shook because um, I, I would have never thought of that, you know, off the top of my head. Like, hey, you know, sitting out of this game is really going to have a really powerful impact on um, really getting at the issues that we're dealing with, you know, at Utah State, like I said, and just across the country. So. I was surprised, honestly, and really impressed on, you know, the idea and the leadership they took on that and then just how everybody kind of rallied behind them. So, you know, kind of like what you're saying, I was kind of surprised and impressed, but it's also pretty cool to see how we can use our platform to, you know, get at issues like this that are going on across the country.